Hey, meeting planners. Last week, I had the absolute pleasure of sitting down virtually with Jennifer Spear of Clean Slate Strategies. So today's video is my conversation with her and I'm asking Jennifer some great questions about pivoting from live to virtual uh, and more importantly, what are some of the considerations that you as planners should keep in mind when contracting and pricing for speakers in a virtual environment? Stick around. Hey, Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate you bringing your time and your talents uh, to the vlog today. I have a lot of clients asking me about how to deal with their speaker contracts now that uh, their, their programs are shifting and, and in some cases canceling altogether. So to start, I'd love to hear from you about what just the general consensus is with the speaker community um, around this time and any optimistic things you've heard or even pessimistic things you've heard from the community. Hey, Leanne, thanks for having me. Uh, I think on the whole, speakers tend to be an optimistic bunch. I mean, it's kind of an occupational hazard. Uh, we spend our time um, helping people see the positive sides of things. Um, we want to help them be motivated and inspired to take action. And uh, I mean, for myself, I speak on change and really big change and, and wanting to see the opportunities in it. So I think in general, we're optimistic. Uh, but we're also very realistic and uh, so we understand the the challenges and, and what's happening and we're trying for the most part to to really partner with our clients to try and help them you know whichever way this goes and of course being respectful to um, all the different rules as you go across the country every province is a little bit different and, and so wanting to be able to respect those but i can tell you when this opens up, we will be the first ones back to the party. We miss being with people. Um, it's definitely what we enjoy doing is being able to connect with people and, and wanting to be there live. I am so encouraged to hear that, Jennifer, because I think planners are quite concerned about how this is all gonna look like in the future. So to hear that you guys are ready and willing uh, to meet again is so exciting. And I know that I'm looking forward to, to the day where I can meet with you, but also meet with other uh, speaker professionals as well. Jennifer, can you tell me what some speakers are doing and how they change their delivery as planners are pivoting to virtual meetings? Sure. I mean, there are some speakers who have been speaking virtually for years, so it's very comfortable. Um, they have a lot of experience in it. And so for them, it would just be very natural. Mm -hmm. um, if we're seeing live events going virtual and, and wanting to then take the, the content, the delivery, the message and pivoting it to a virtual format, I, I think there's a lot of things that we have to take into consideration there. And so what I would recommend for, for any planner or organizer is to, to have the conversation with their speaker. Let them know what their overall goals and objectives are, because it's not really, let's take a live event and put it online. Um, let's put on the best virtual event. And so I think by partnering with your speakers, they'll be able to help deliver that content um, in, in a way that's going to engage your audience and, and deliver on your objectives. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, it's going back to CMP 101 and getting back to the goals and objectives. And you're right, planners still need to revisit those as being the driving force behind any meeting, regardless of the format. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, and the other thing I think ab about that is, so it's not just that we're changing the format from, from live to virtual, what's happening to our attendees and our participants in their organizations and in their lives has completely changed, right? It's mm -hmm. changed for all of us. And so the goals and, and objectives may need to change to be able to address the current needs of the audience. Mm -hmm. So I, anyone who says that they're going to take a three day live conference and just take it and put it online, I would question that. You want to make sure that you're delivering the, the best that the audience needs um, in the best and most engaging way that you can. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's such a good point. Thank you. 
Jennifer, I know some of our planner clients are going to engage with speakers for their virtual events. What questions should they be asking speakers as opposed to when they interview them for live events? Um, so it's interesting. So I would definitely want to know their experience and, and comfort level with doing virtual, um, how they convey the content and how they engage the audience because it is different. So it's not just about taking whatever you were going to do live, like your, your full hour keynote and just delivering it from your living room. So I'd want to understand how comfortable they are with the, you know, the online environment um, and how they'll engage the audience. Um, I think that would be really important. Um, and I would suggest or, or recommend that, that planners, that you partner with your speakers um, because they might have a lot of great ideas. Mm -hmm. it, for there's some uh, planners, if you work with inside an organization, you might be planning one or two events in a year, whereas a speaker might be speaking at 30, 50, 100 different events. And as we're seeing everything go to virtual, again, as a planner, you might have one or two events that are doing that, whereas the speaker might be working with dozens of events. And so we might have some good suggestions and ideas on how you can improve your engagement or um, different techniques and uses that you can do to engage your participants and make sure that you're delivering the, what they need at this moment. That, that is such a great point. And I'm hopeful this uh, will shift a, a planner's um, frame of mind when collaborating more with their speakers versus just treating them as a separate entity and part of the program and seeing it more of a partnership. So I love that advice. Thank you. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see our clients start using that as well. So Jennifer, this final question is uh, a sensitive one, but it's something that my clients are starting to ask us about, and that's about pricing. Mm -hmm. How are speakers adjusting their pricing moving to a virtual format versus live? Yeah, it's, it's one of those challenging questions. Um, certainly, we're uh, feeling a little bit of the, the dance around it in terms of how do we talk to it. But I think really what I would suggest is think about why you hired the speaker in the first place. Um, so was it to provide value? Do they, <clears throat> excuse me, do they have um, some specialized knowledge, uh, intellectual property, some uh, a unique uh, way of delivering? and if so, then the value is still there, regardless of whether it's live or virtual. Um, so I'd be looking at the value first. Um, I think you could save on travel. Uh, and for a lot of speakers, they might even have their uh, sleep in my own bed rate, right? Where anytime they don't have to get on a plane, there might be a lower rate anyways uh, for delivering that. But I would also ask for you to, to think about what's going on now. So if we're taking a speaker who's used to speaking live and now they're going to be delivering online, well, they're going to have to really adjust um, their message, really adjust the okay. content, make sure that they're able to, to pivot their message to meet the goals and objectives of your audience now. So they might have been working under different goals and objectives prior, so they might have to change their entire speech in terms of to be relevant. They're going to have to engage um, in new ways, different ways. Plus, yeah. they have to become their own AV tech. So they have to make sure that their equipment works. They have to make sure that they've got good lighting and sound, and they have to set that up all themselves. They have to make sure that the, the children and the dogs are put outside. And all of these other new concerns that they have that they might not have had before. So they're actually having to do a lot more work and the difference is, is just the travel piece. So I would, I would consider that um, as you're going through, thinking about the amount of work and the effort for speakers. Now, having said that, we want to speak at your events. I'm, I'm telling you this, I, I know that we do, and we wanna partner with you on this. Um, so we want the, for you to understand and respect what it is that we have to do in order to be able to do that. But we also understand that things are changing. And if this was a sudden, as it was for most of us, a sudden change that we're having to go from live to, to virtual, recognizing that you've got um, different costs and expenses associated with this. And so yeah. we're going to want to try and help you out with this. Uh, but we also know you're saving on the food and beverage and the hotel and, and everything else. So I think, again, if you partner 
you'll find that you can get a lot more value out of your speaker because they can help you in other ways, help you with the actual design of the event, how to engage. Maybe you could take your keynote or who could also moderate a panel or, or do something else for you to add even more value. So I wouldn't just look at it as a straight, oh, you're not here in person, you've got to cut your rate. Just think about the value that they bring and what that means to your attendees. What I love about the virtual world now is let's not just take an, a, a live event and put it virtual. Let's create the most amazing virtual event ever, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's what we should be doing. Oh, that is so good. You said so many things that completely align with what a good meeting planner is looking for. Uh, obviously, we've talked about the goals and objectives, but using words like partnership and event design and open for business. I mean, that is so such great information. And I'm, I'm really excited to get this in the hands of event planners so that they can start working with you guys again and creating successful programs. Thank you so much for all of your time today, Jennifer. And I cannot wait to see you soon. Oh, thanks, Leanne. And I cannot wait to see you in person. Oh, bye, Jen. All right.